Welcome to part two of the video resource for the book, A Single Shard. In part one, I covered all the uh, aspects, the clay aspects of making pottery, uh, forming the pots, and now in part two, we're going to cover firing the kiln, decorating the pots, glazing the pots, doing the second firing of the pots, uh, shipping the pots, and then also how I run my business. Now, the reason I'm standing next to this big tank here this is a tank of propane. Propane is kind of like a uh, gas that you put in your car. It's a liquefied gas, and this is what runs my kiln. Uh, a huge difference between uh, potters of the 12th century and potters of the 21st century is potters of the 12th century had to fire with wood. They had to cut down trees, haul the wood, and it was incredibly labor-intensive to get the energy to fire the kiln. Uh, it's the opposite for me. It's so easy to get this, uh, this energy source. All I have to do is pick up the phone and call the propane company. They drive a truck out here, they hook up the gas, and that's how I get my energy for the kiln. So uh, next up, we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you how we fire the kiln. Okay, now we're inside and you can hear the kiln firing. That uh, There's a gas line that goes from the propane tank into the studio, and then there's two burners on the back of this kiln. You'll see them in just a little bit. And uh, they're firing the kiln. So let me show you how this kiln works. Now there's a huge difference between the 12th century and the 21st century right here. This box here is a, it's a computer controlled kiln and you can see the green number is the temperature that the kiln is at right now and the orange number is the temperature we're going to fire to. You can just see the temperature slowly climbing. And um, they didn't have tools like this back in the 12th century. Now this is really neat. Let me show you this. This is inside the kiln is red heat and that's what 1600 degrees looks like. And there are little uh, plugs that fill that hole but I just left it open so you can see what it looks like. Now we're going to go around the back of the kiln to see those burners. And again, this is real simple. When the temperature goes up to the right temperature, I just shut it off. But here you can see where the energy comes from. This is a, uh, an, a burner that has an electric fan. It's almost like a hair dryer. On the back there, you can see the, uh, the fan blows the propane into the kiln, and it's propane lit, and you can see that blue flame is uh, what's firing the kiln up. So we'll come back in a day when the kiln is cooled and we'll see what the pots look like. Okay, so the kiln fired off yesterday and it's cooled down to about 100 degrees and the pots have finished their first firing. And one thing that's a big difference is in the 12th century the kilns were these climbing dragon kilns were much larger. And to stack the kiln you actually have to crawl inside the kiln to put the pots inside the kiln. I've got a great technology here it's like a train track. Let me show you. This just rolls out on its own and uh, it makes it much easier to load the kiln and to unload the kiln. And so the pots are now, they're cooled enough, they're ready to uh, be decorated. The reason we fire them to this 1700 degrees temperature is to make them stronger. Um, when they haven't been fired, they're very breakable. Now I can handle them easier and they're much easier to draw on and to decorate. So next up, we're going to show you the decorating process. Every potter has their own way of decorating their work. When I started making pottery for a living in 1978, I simply dipped my pots in attractive glazes and let the shapes of the pots and the beauty of the glazes be my artistic expression. In 1984, I started drawing funny cartoons on my pots. This made my style a lot more unique, and it really injected my personality and spirit into my artwork. These cartoon pots also sold a lot better than my earlier work. There are currently over 50 shops and galleries throughout the United States that carry my pottery. The name of my business is Wallyware, and it comes from this cartoon dog named Wally. I came up with a character on a whim in 1984, and 30 years later he's still on my pots. The idea with Wally is that he's a canine celebrity who has adventures with anyone and everyone. Wally has hung out with movie stars and politicians, and he's my way of talking about the things that are going on in the world around us. I like the fact that some of my pots will survive into the distant future, and they will say something about what our time in history was like. 
The difference between 12th century glazed materials and what we have here in the 21st century is huge. The 12th century potters were limited to materials they could find in nature, such as clay, limestone, and wood ash. Here in the 21st century, we have an amazing selection of commercially made ceramic glaze supplies that come from various mines and factories all over the planet. I use underglazed pencils and a variety of ceramic stains to decorate my work. Now I'm going to show you how we do the decorating and uh, the technology of this is we've got these underglazed uh, pencils. These are actually very special pencils where the lead is uh, a special chemical that that you can put on the pots and it fires up. You can't use a regular pencil on these, it won't work. They have to be these special underglazed pencils. These are the ice cream bowls that I threw and now I'm going to show you how I draw the ice cream design. The ice cream design is uh, it's kind of a joke about uh, a famous painting called Edvard Munch's The Scream. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a character on this that looks a lot like the famous painting. And so I do these like, you know, 12 at a time. And they're pretty simple to do. It's a little tricky drawing on the inside of a bowl. But I've done so many of these, I've got it pretty well figured out. Now this design has a really neat history. Uh, about 10 years ago, I entered a contest, and the contest was for ice cream bowls. And it, so I, I, I made this design and sent it off, and it was uh, juried, which means you get a judge. The judge was uh, Ben of Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream. And it was a national contest, and I got into the show, and I ended up winning, like, best of show. And the prize for best of show was, they said it was a year's supply of ice cream, and I thought that would be, like, unlimited ice cream. Turns out it was 52 pints of Ben & Jerry's ice cream. They sent us these coupons, and it was really magical because we went to the store, and we had these, these coupons for ice cream, and it was basically, like, have as much ice cream as you want. Uh, the 52 pints of ice cream lasted about three months in our household. That's when um, uh, my daughters, Robert and Monica, were younger, and we ate a lot of ice cream back then. And we lived like kings for three months based on, it was all of this, this design here, the ice cream bowl. So you can see I'm drawing this guy's little face. It's pretty simple. There he is. And then I draw this spiral in here. And it's a little tricky drawing like this, but I've done so many of these. It's kind of second nature. And I go in and draw this, and then after these, after I draw them, I don't do the painting. I'm going to hand this over to my assistant, Kelly, and her job is to, basically she paints most of the time. That's, that's most of what she does is painting on the pots, and it's almost like a paint-by-number. Have you ever had a paint-by-number coloring book? Well, that's kind of what this is, because everything is kind of, we don't really make too many decisions. Uh, we just do them like we did them before. And you can see, it's coming together. It is very much like just a black and white, and she'll paint in the colors. And then I, these pencils, they kind of wear down, you have to sharpen them. And then here's where I write the joke. See, it's kind of like ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. And I write ice cream. And there you have it, the ice cream bowl. My job is to paint the pot, and I do it using these ceramic stains. And I got this job six years ago. And the reason I stayed here for so long is because it's really fun. I get to paint all day and listen to music and listen to books on tape. And sometimes I try to think about how many pots we've painted and sold in the, black, in the last six years. And I can't even try to think of it because we just produce so much stuff. It's crazy. Now we're ready to glaze the pots. Uh, this is a real simple process, and it's actually similar to how pots were glazed in the 12th century. Uh, you guys have been studying celadon. Celadon is a clear, transparent glaze with iron in it. The iron is what makes it green. My glaze is clear, transparent, but it doesn't have iron because you wouldn't want to wreck the color of the pots. 
So I'm going to show you now how I just simply dip them to the pot and glaze. This is a form, I've mixed this glaze myself with various chemicals, the main one being silica, which is glass. And it's real simple. I just take the pot here, dip it in, pull it out, set it back on the board. And that's, uh, and then when it fires in the kiln, it'll be clear, transparent, you'll be able to see that design through there. Okay, here's a, this is a glaze firing, and all of these pots have been painted, decorated, they all have cartoons and jokes on them, but they've been dipped in the clear glaze, and when they, uh, when they get fired, this glaze will melt and become transparent, and they'll be the finished product. And this kiln, I'm going to, it's Friday uh, night right now, I'm going to roll it in, fire it all day Saturday, let it cool on Sunday, and then we'll roll it out on Monday.